Hey everyone, uh, this week for our COVID NVR series, we're going to be exploring the molecule heparin. And uh, Daniel and Mike are joining us for their expert scientific knowledge on the subject. Um, so yeah, Daniel, if you want to explain a little bit more about heparin actually interacts uh, with some of these proteins. Yeah, so heparin is a known blood thinner that's been already used as a therapeutic agent. It's an FDA approved drug. And so uh, apparently, according to this study, not only it helps with uh, the blood thinning capabilities, but also it might directly uh, have antiviral properties, which is very interesting. It's very cool to look at the structure of heparin. Steve, if you grab that little molecule in front of you and enlarge it, uh, heparin is, a, is an oligosaccharide, a polysaccharide. It's a, it's a, it's a it's made up of a number of sugar unit, these, uh, these amino glycans. And so this one is, uh, it's just a tetramer, but the actual medicine heparin is going to be dozens of these units. But for today, we'll just use a, a shortened one. And I think what's really interesting about it is that it's got a lot of negative charges on it, which is gonna be important when Daniel tells us about how it works in binding to proteins in the body or on the virus. Yeah, so those uh, sulfate uh, groups that are all over the molecule, they provide, you know, they confer a lot of electronegativity to this molecule. It's a very common medicine, as Daniel was mm -hmm. saying, for people who have uh, issues with clotting. Uh, but right now, it's given to just about every hospitalized COVID patient that comes in uh, because they often do have uh, properties, problems, issues with their blood. Uh, but as Daniel is going to tell us, it, it has advantages even beyond that. Yeah, because the heparin sulfate is located in the glycocalyx, in the cell membrane, in the exterior of the cell membrane. And so uh, the virus actually, the, this study has shown that it's required to, to bind to that heparin sulfate uh, besides the ACE2 binding as well. So this study showed in vitro that not only ACE2 is required for viral entry, but also the heparin sulfate that's located in the uh, glycocalyx, in the cellular membrane. And so, um, what happens is that we could use, according to these researchers, a, a decoy strategy and use uh, heparin or heparin sulfate or even other uh, polysaccharides um, to just bind to those areas and to prevent uh, the virus to enter the cells. And what we can see here by using the electrostatic surface potential map that I applied here on the spike uh, um, RBD domains of S. SARS-CoV-2 here on my left and SARS-CoV-1 on the right, we can see how it's a lot more electropositive on SARS-CoV-2 than on SARS-CoV-1. Yeah, exactly. So um, here, this one here on the, le the left is a SARS-CoV-2. This one on the right is a SARS-CoV-1. And we can see how there's a difference in electronegativity very clear here. We have a patch here, electropositive patch, with a lot of um, arginine and, and lysine residues. Here, it's not as electropositive at all, it's more neutral. And so that makes a, a big difference in binding because of course heparin, this is a tetrasaccharide only of heparin and uh, because it has many sulfate uh, groups, it's very electronegatively charged. So it makes a lot of sense that it just would bind tighter to all this patch, to this area. There's a lot of docking uh, possibilities actually shown here and potentially could even bind in this positive uh, pocket down here. And so because uh, the heparin sulfate binding is being shown to be required to viral entry, this could be an interesting decoy strategy to, uh, you know, as a, th th as a therapy for preventing the viral infection. If, if we look at um, you know, this protein and how it interacts with heparin, uh, this is important because this is actually the receptor binding domain of the spike protein. So this is something that we've done several videos on. 
um, where you can see that the uh, the top region, this receptor binding domain, um, is what we have here. And so normally there'd be you know, pretty much the entire uh, coronavirus all the way down here. And then there's these spikes that jet off. And this is just really the, the top portion of the spike that we can see. And that's actually the most important part because that interacts with the cells in your body, the ACE2 in particular. Um, so if we're able to essentially block the end or block some portion of it, or maybe even induce a structural change, um, that that could prevent it from binding with ACE2. Yeah, they are mm -hmm. suggesting a potential therapy uh, using some nasal sprays that you would apply on your, you know, the patient's nose, and so it directly would, you know, uh, treat the, the infection there. So so it doesn't, you know, expand to the lungs, which you know where they would get a lot worse there. You know, and there's also, by the way, other polysaccharides that are being also tested for for this same purpose. We could take a look at uh, the other research study if you'd like. Yeah, so this study used heparin and heparin sulfates and fucoidan and other highly sulfated polysaccharides. They were screened using a surface plasmon resonance, SPR, to measure the binding affinity to the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein. And so we have here the extract of the uh, those um, fuconides which is uh, from, you know, it's extracted from uh, seaweed. It's called uh, um, kombu. It's very popular in Japanese cuisine. And so these extracts have, uh, what happens is that they are not linear like the other saccharides, like heparin and heparin sulfate. This one's more branched and therefore it, it allows for more three-dimensional space um, interactions. All right. So thanks, Daniel and Mike, for checking out how heparin and um, you know, similar molecules like this phacoidon, um actually might interact with the receptor binding domain of the spike. Um, so if you know, we're probably going to be looking at a lot more interactions of the spike, um, probably get some more updates as, as people progress with this. Um, but yeah, you know, this is uh, just one more potential uh, chemical that could help in the fight against COVID-19. Very cool. Cool. Thanks a lot, everyone. See you next time you. in our COVID NVR series.